Hello. Hey, Glenn. Hi. Uh, I've been, uh, you know, ever since I um, first started talking to you, I've been, <laughs> you get you get people thinking a lot. Like, you start that's, seeing, that's like. That's the whole purpose. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can't convince anybody, but you can make them think. Yeah, like Socrates said. <laughs> I, yeah, and I I see the signs everywhere. Yeah. It's all adding up, and uh, uh, I don't know, um, yeah, and I, I talked to Watt, and he he just he's so he like exposes himself by the way he acts. I don't know. He, but then he, you know, I I try to, you know, I'm trying to. He's so secretive. That's the thing with him. He, he's really secretive, and I can't. I don't know. But. Because he has information beyond what he speaks of. He's uh, he's kind of in a bind. He obviously is not allowed to share all he knows. Yeah, it's probably uh, uh, part of the whole uh, thing with the secret society. They probably, because they, they make you uh, almost like buying yourself. You can't, like, I don't know. But I don't know. But yeah, I was watching on um, on TV. There was a documentary. Uh, it was a propaganda piece, but it was on the, some history channel. And it was talking about the Neanderthals. Mm-hmm. And it brought up how uh, they they tried saying they were saying oh the Neanderthals were a lot of people mistake them for being idiots because the one of the bones that they found was from somebody who was uh, like uh, crippled or something like that and then they and then they said they the, one of the first sites they went was in a cave in northern Israel called Kabara. And then there was another cave called Hyonema. And and they were saying how uh the Cro Magnon and the Neanderthals they probably like both met like somewhere like in the Middle East. Well it it in what I have read mm-hmm. it seems like their origin is at the Sea of Marmara on the Bosphorus in Turkey, just the other side of the water from Greece. And uh, there's a place called... Sounds like Chalice. We're in the Middle Eastern area, or? Well, it's in Turkey at the Bosphorus, but they they certainly would have land route connections through Turkey and and Syria, and and would have been involved in the activity that uh, created Egypt as we know it and uh, Jerusalem and Sinai. It's uh, it's my view that uh, they were more linked to water than clan mothers. The Mediterranean Sea of Marmara that enters the Bosphorus would be uh, a reasonable place to conclude because there are signs of them um, having lived anywhere from uh, caves in France Mm -hmm. all the way through to Mount Sinai and the middle point would be Turkey there is a a place in uh, what is now Syria um that that seems to have been associated with uh, uh, teaching of uh, people who would then become royals or pharaohs or whatever. 
that it was like a, a university. In an area of Syria which is basically controlled by the Kurds, and the Kurds, of course, are are the um, symbol of cheese. Cheese is important because it basically tells you that the underground spaces are all mined and tunneled out in living spaces. Oh, okay. <laughs> and and the collapse of that area would be easy enough to accomplish if you've riddled the place. So strip mining uh, is is how people deal with a place that is uh, undermined with a whole bunch of caves. Uh, Gaza Strip, for example, the Israelis have gone in and bombarded the place basically to collapse as many of the tunnels as possible. They may be doing the people of Gaza a favor by destroying the surface because it's it's certainly one of the areas that would... Uh, be in difficulty should there be a, a tsunami or a flood or something like that because all of that is subject to collapse. It, um, and, and the place most likely to collapse is the Michigan Peninsula. Everything under Lake Michigan has been mined from uh, Milwaukee, in underneath the water from uh, um, the peninsula itself down from uh, the lake area. There's a, an island um, called Ile Royale in which uh, uh, they've been mining copper since the, uh, the Indian times, way, way back, uh, the original natives who live there, which probably were descendants of Aztecs. So it wouldn't take much to collapse that. And if you look at Michigan, I told you before, it's, it's, like, a it's like a mitt. Mm -hmm. Alan Watt, his last name, Watt, in the code is mitt. Yeah. Yeah. So... He's got some information he's not sharing. And um, part of what he's he's doing, I guess, um, has to do with, uh, I don't know, trying to focus attention on me. Well, he's, he's, he's not trying to, he doesn't even like to mention you. Well, he, he has done it in a surreptitious way, and that's uh, by publishing my material and, and demanding uh, that nobody copy it because it's his. Uh, when you do that in a forum like the Internet, mm -hmm. it's a matter of time before somebody suggests that... Uh, yeah. Hey, how can you be asking people to not do what you do? <laughs> yeah, but you know, he told me he says, um, he says, oh well, he's like, well, I I handed out that stuff before even Glenn, like way back, I, he was handing out stuff to you and your team and he's handing out like written stuff to you guys and he to get it out there. He never handed anything to me until such time as he had a subscription to my papers and had been speaking to me for years. What? <laughs> and then he says, he's like, I only spoke to him a few times. Wow. Damn. Yeah, a few times a week. Uh, uh, for years? Wow. He's, yeah. Damn. But when I would ask him things about, like, you know, like, because he used to go on another radio show, he would say, 
Um, why are you fishing? Why are you Why are you fishing for? Like, well, that's that's what you do, don't you? You're you're a fisherman because you're a seeker of information. <laughs> You can't seek information without asking questions, especially of those people who don't seem like they want to tell you the whole story. Yeah, he's, you know, he, he tries to make you feel guilty by, mm-hmm. but, but that's what got me. He's he's kind of slick, but uh, it kind of got me. I I I was getting pissed off. I got pissed off. About it's, it. uh, it's no different than most Scott, Scottish people. They have a job to do, and it's a uh, an equivalent job to the Israelis. Um, they're um, good cop, bad cop type of role they play mm-hmm. together. Uh-huh. They come from the same area. They have similar backgrounds. And that bagpipe is the um, the official musical instrument of Turkey, uh. and they wear dresses. Uh. They call them kilts. <laughs> and he said also that he's like, well, I have information about Glenn, but I'm not saying it. Well, let him say it. <laughs> uh, and I was like, "Wow!" Well, but I think he was just saying that just to like create some type of mystery. Yeah. And I'm just like, ah. Uh, but um, there's a lot of information about me. I'm 68 years old, so. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I asked him like, because he said, "Oh, it's not paying enough. This stuff, it's not, it just doesn't pay." And it doesn't pay. I mean, anybody who gets into the business of seeking real knowledge Mm -hmm. and expects to make money at it, better have their head examined. Yeah. And and I'm like, well, don't you have another degree in something else? And he's like, why do you want to know about my personal life? But, you know, I've wrote him letters about my personal life, telling about my personal life. And I, you know, and I felt offended when he said that, but, but hey, but, um, he's, um, He's a Scotsman who basically, if I can believe what he says, worked for banks, married into a banking family, and um, was was uh, surprised at the fact that he was expected to service the wives of some of the banking's top executives. So what? <laughs> <laughs> so what? You know? Yeah. Goats have been doing that for years. Mm, he, he's even referred to himself as a goat. Yeah. <laughs> a scapegoat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So, yeah, I, you know, I'm looking into these... Uh, no, uh, like, I'm, look, I'm trying to understand the coding a little bit more. I'm reading your articles and stuff. Uh, one thing I, I'm trying to get this straight. Like they call like Jesus Christ character, he was the liberator, right? They call him liberator. That's why he's shaped like a Y well, on the, the cross. The one they have in Argentina, mm-hmm. stuck up on a big rock, mm-hmm. is called the Redeemer. Yeah, also the Redeemer too. Yeah. Redeemer means the repo man. The oh. guy who cashes in. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, that's an. That's avocado. why you have IRS in Christ, and mm-hmm. you have IRS in the um, financial community, who are your tax collectors, and they're in the process right now of redeeming. Mm, okay. They're cashing in their chips and taking it back. Mm. Their their main code word, if you trace this IRS back, it's Polaris, the North Star. Yeah. So you have P, and you have Ola, which is uh, the Spanish term for high, and you have IRS, Polaris, sir. Yeah. IRS. Mm, 
that's why they call each other sir, too, in the military. I thought it was just because they named it after Sirius the Star. No. <laughs> but, uh, Polaris is a um, a period of time because a North Star mm-hmm. is not the North Star to this planet forever. It only is there for a certain number of years. Mm-hmm. Vega has been a North Star. Alder Amin will be a North Star. So when when people lived in the past, they looked at the North Star as being the center of activity. But because the Earth wobbles, as it goes around its orbit around the sun, over a period of time, uh, things that are in a certain place are no longer in a place. So they they have a precession, which is 25,800 years, uh, which is the entire circuit from beginning to end, and then it starts over again. Within that precession, there are subdivisions on which the North Star plays a role. And since it changes over time, it tells you which part of the precession they're in. My suggestion is that uh, in 2009, we are in the first year of a new precession. We are in the age of Aquarius, the water bearer. That's also the gene pool, too, right? I beg your pardon? That's also uh, that water that is also like the the gene pool, right? Uh, Well, it's the creation of life. Water brings on new life. But it brings on new life by first destroying old life. So the period in which we are going through is the end uh, of one kind of life, like we had the end of the dinosaurs or the the uh, mammoth. Uh, now it's the end of the uh, group called Polo, the pool, in the northern hemisphere. So two things have to happen. Water has to cover the part of the land where most of the people work so that most will die, and a new land must appear. There is a series of children's books which you should read. Mm -hmm. It's called The Chronicles of Narnia. Narnia. How do you spell it? N A R N I A, and and they basically simplify uh, what is really going on. I think there's seven books in the series. It's by a guy called C. S. Lewis. Mm-hmm. Now, of course, C. S. A C is a three, and an S is a one, so that's thirty-one or thirteen depending on which way you look at it. Mm -hmm. And a Lewis is, L-E is le, Mm -hmm. like le or la in French. So it converts in English to the word the. And the balance is whiz. Wizard, one definition and Miz is another definition. And Sam is a third, Uncle Sam. And Maz is another definition. Because an I and an A are interchangeable. A W and an M are interchangeable. The suggestion when you have a double letter, Mm -hmm. such as an M or a W, uh, is that you really are just speaking of twice 
the original letter. So an M is really two N's. Yeah. And a so is a W. Two. Uh, but it it could also be two C's. Because an N on its side looks like a C. So one of the important codes is between two C's. <laughs> John McCain has two C's. There are two C's, like the Atlantic and the Pacific, in the activity that will occur at CERN is basically two C's because you have C E R N and an N can be a C, so therefore it's re between two C's. So it's re means two, and then you have a C at on either side. So it's the most likely thing that will begin by creating a spark when the at atoms collide mm -hmm. in a collier, collider and collier are almost the same word, with the letter D in one and L in the other. A collier means a coal mine mining place underground. Collider will cause the spark that will explode the acetone that will begin the process of burning the coal seam around the world. And the black one. And there is uh, one of these colliders in Russia near Moscow. There's the one in Switzerland. And there's the one in Chicago. And they basically will feed to each other. So it's like a transmission cable. Oh. Stanford University has a linear uh, collider as opposed to a donut-shaped one because it's basically at the end. So in California, you will get the message in the coal seam to light the fires. That's why there was a monk by the name of Sarah who went from Mallorca mm -hmm. to California and set up 13 monasteries. Attached to these monasteries, he planted vineyards. A vineyard is the source of grapes. Grapes are the source of wine. Wine is the source of uh, vinegar. Mm -hmm. Vinegar is the source of of acetone. Wow. <laughs> acetone blows up sufficiently to light the coal seams. Acetone is is the igniter used by nature to cause a volcano to explode. Usually um, on a mountain uh, you have a lake. Mm -hmm. Underneath, you have lava. You need something between the two that will cause the explosion. It's a little bit like New York City, Manhattan. Mm -hmm. Underneath Manhattan is a set of steam pipes. Steam pipes... Um, provide helpful service by bringing heat and energy to different buildings in Manhattan. However, steam pipes are basically a bomb waiting to happen. And we saw it happen in
in one of the streets of New York a couple of years ago when in the middle of the street there was an explosion that went up to the third or fourth floors of the buildings around it. That's because when you superheat pipe with steam on the inside, as long as it's protected by earth, you don't have a problem. Mm -hmm. But if there is a sudden amount of water, cold water, that seeps through the earth as you would get from a tsunami or as you would get from uh, month-long rain, uh, when the water from the surface touches the steam pipe, Mm -hmm. you get a reaction between hot and cold which causes an explosion. And and, uh, in Manhattan, at one stage, if it's only one place where it happens. They shut off the steam from the pipes in all directions and then go repair the problem and and keep on working. However, were Manhattan to receive a permanent flood of water Mm -hmm. from the Atlantic Ocean, as would be created by a tsunami or an explosion from the Titanic, that is, basically sitting there waiting to do its job. The rear end of the Titanic is made of titanium and is uh, equipped with a uh, an explosive device that will induce or enhance a tsunami. It's right against the mid-Atlantic ridge, so it will focus its energy in one direction only, and that is towards the East Coast, taking out parts of Canada, maritime provinces would be in in the line, and then it would be basically hitting all the way down the East Coast uh, with a tsunami, which could bring a wave Uh, much higher than most cities are above sea level. And at Providence, Rhode Island, it would circumvent the the mountains there, the Appalachian Mountains, because there's kind of a, a path between them, and pour into the Ohio Valley. So you, in fact, could get water all the way to the Mississippi River, Chicago, uh, and the Mississippi River from this activity on on the Atlantic Ocean coming through Providence, Rhode Island. Uh, part of that would also be water coming up the St. Lawrence uh, and and destroying Montreal on the way through. It was interesting. Uh, I was talking to a friend of mine, she was telling me she's reading one of your, your old older articles that you uh, made, and uh, you basically said that New Orleans is going to be flooded before it even happened. Sure. How did you know that? Well, it's it's simple mathematics. It's physics. It's you you. Um, you don't build a city under sea level and lean it up against a body of water like the Gulf of Mexico, which has vents right at the mouth of the Mississippi from volcanoes down below. So the volcanoes can blow, and that's one way you would get water into New Orleans. But the other the other thing is um, if a, a hurricane is traveling in a certain direction and would miss New Orleans, mm. if the underwater volcano is heating up the water there, that hurricane will be attracted to it and it would then 
go up in that area, which would mean it would cause a storm surge, which is basically what happened in New Orleans. So for me, like New York, it's just a matter of time. And you, uh. If you're going to build a city, you don't build it in a way that it's sure to kill people unless you have a reason to do it. And these people who built New Orleans, Lewis and Clark and all of those people who established the territory, uh, had a reason to do it. They knew the plan. They knew that at a certain stage, uh, what they were planning was a laboratory called the United States of America, and its role would be finished, and therefore it would have to be destroyed. So its position had to be plotted on a geology map, basically to guarantee that they could use the forces of nature to destroy it. Uh, I know they have weaponry. You know, uh, I never heard you mention it, like hard technology, where you can just create tsunamis and absolutely all the all of uh, the the control mechanisms mm-hmm. over Mother Nature are in the Indian Ocean. So by being in Antarctica, in front of the Indian Ocean, and the basic passageways have all been built under the ocean, they can basically go to a place like uh, Banda Aceh in Malaysia, like they did in, uh, what was it, 2003 or something, and, and lay a charge... Uh, on one of their tunnels that would allow uh, the tunnel to break and the water to be sucked in. That's what a tsunami is. A tsunami is basically when the ocean all of a sudden is uh, confronted with the fact that the bottom has fallen out, like a, a collapse under the sea. Mm -hmm. Uh, It can happen naturally in caverns or it can happen in mines that have been dug and it can happen if somebody put a tunnel and attached an explosive. Now what happens to the seawater is it drops into the hole. Mm -hmm. Until it fills that cavity it's going down. So the people on any island or seashore in the neighborhood would see the tide going out. And they'd say, oh, look at that. There's a a nice piece of property that didn't exist before, and they start walking out on this, what they believe is low tide. But what they don't realize is when the water has filled the cavity, boom, at the bottom, it bounces up, and from the hole, it spreads out. Now, a tsunami travels under the ocean, under the seawater, but on top of the sediment. And it travels at a speed of a jet aircraft, four to 500 miles an hour. And depending on how big the hole was, the wave that travels will be um, that depth. You know, it changes according to the depth of the hole because you get more or less water if the hole is bigger or smaller. Now, many times what you get is a, um, a hole that creates a wave under the seawater of 35 feet. Now, 35 feet travels along the floor of the ocean at 500 miles an hour. There is nothing on the surface 
that makes one know this because it's all happening at the bottom of the water until it reaches land. And then, of course, when it reaches land, then it's going 500 miles an hour and it's 35 miles, 35 feet thick, it goes straight over the land. And anybody that's standing there is going to be drowned by the tsunami. The interesting thing about the word tsunami is that it has, number one, the first two letters are T and S. And a T is a two, and an S is a one. So it's about two and one. Then it's about Sue. And Sue is a boy called Sue. Yeah, it's, uh, a male, female, female on the outside, male on the inside. And the final part is Ami, which means friends, which means nothing. Pawns, I can get rid of them, disposable. Wow, that's so cool. So there you go. The word ami comes from the moho discontinuity. The part which is solid is called sima, S-I-M-A. Yeah, I was reading um, one article you sent me. It's called John's German Bitch Rigo Society. And it's John Birch Society, U.S. organization. Anti-communist, politically right-wing, founded in 1958 by Robert H. W. Welch, named yeah. for Captain John Birch, U.S. Army officer, killed in 1945 by Chinese communists, reportedly known for extremism. Sea Highlands Extreme Tracking, Queen Beatrix. Birch is the same word as bitch. <laughs> And the thing too, in the documentary, they were talking about Neanderthal women, 
and they how they were treated. They said they were treated like, 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 like a cart. Like they just walked over them, and 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 the men they really respected. They would be, like they had rituals where they would bury, uh, you know, the, like the men who died with uh, with flints and weapons and. So the it, word Neanderthaler is basically just the word that they assembled together to tell you that they are the oldest because the big, the first part, Dean, is linked to the dinosaur. Mm-hmm. And Thalers is that they are dollar coins. Where do you use dollar coins in gambling? In slot machines. So you can find them any place you find gambling. But clan mothers is basically described as the origin of human beings, homo habilis. And if you read some of the stuff I have on there, I'll tell you that uh, they found the DNA of woman, uh, which dates back an original mother that started everything that we have on earth today, all the human beings on earth today. This original mother dates back to a period sometime between uh, 115,000 B.C. to 200,000 B.C. My suggestion is there were many of them, Mm -hmm. and most died off without having an impact, whereas one stuck and, and... and the one that stuck is more around 115,000 B.C. But you don't see the appearance of Y chromosome until 80,000 B.C. So something happened between 115,000 and 80,000, and what the only thing that makes sense mm-hmm. is if woman could survive, for that length of time, she had to be having babies. Yeah. And since there were no men, she had to be hermaphrodite, like worms and other animals uh, that are not likely to meet a mate along the way. They start off life as hermaphrodites. As a hermaphrodite, she could only give birth to clones of herself. So... From 115,000 B.C. to 80,000 B.C., in Africa, Homo habilis was a woman. Many of them clones of a single woman. And something occurred at about 80,000 B.C. that divided the genders. That brought in the Y chromosome, and that's what that's what they meant by like with Jesus Christ, the liberator. Why? What I'm saying is uh-huh. that if you go by the signs they use, they describe woman as an X. Oh, uh, oh, uh, okay. A uh, Y is an X with a broken leg. Yeah, it's lame. Yeah. So, who broke the leg? And my point to you is that a Neanderthaler was probably not male or female either, uh, but it was totally different in appearance from the clan mothers. And my suggestion to you is that the difference between the clan mother and the Neanderthaler is strictly related to social engineering. Where the person was raised, under what conditions, and what evolutionary factors would have upon that person. And I suggest that that person most resembles a shrub Uh, as they call themselves, uh, as opposed to a flower for women, because they were probably raised in a place uh, that had water as the principal thing, uh, whereas 
the women were raised in a place that had deserts and jungle. And the two animals they used to describe them in those days in the mythologies is the hippopotamus or the crocodile or alligator, depending on which one you want. They're basically linked. Um, Crocodile lives in swampy water. A, um, A hippopotamus lives in swampy but slightly deeper water. So if a Neanderthaler lived in that uh, environment, Mm -hmm. he would be living by water, and I suggest that means he would be trifibian. He would have gills. The Uh, movie Waterworld suggests that. Uh that, that gills are part of it. So what we're seeing develop now with uh, uh, Serena Williams winning uh, her championship yesterday, last Mm -hmm. night, in Australia, is that she is a a 10, uh, a number one model of what they expect to make. But I suggest that she's not the final model, that there will be a number 11 and a number 12, um, if not a number 13, 14 and 15, uh, but at least uh, 11 and 12, and more likely 13. So what you're seeing in Serena Williams is... um, the word sad, which is what they use for the particle accelerator in Switzerland, CERN, mm-hmm. she would be the equivalent of um, cereal, la sad. Cereal is something that you eat because it quickens the passage through the body of things that have to make it from one end to the other um, provides um, uh, a force that creates both heat and power to get it through. Um, And, and of course, CERN, because it has a C at the beginning and an N at the end, which can be a C, is also leaving the letters ER in the middle. Uh, So ER is RE, and RE stands for two. Second version, like the clan mother was the first version. The people on uh, Earth now that came from Cro-Magnon, our second version, and they're being converted into the third version, and she, Serena, is the closest thing to that. Six foot approximately, uh, built like a middle linebacker. Uh, Breasts are the um, noteworthy thing uh, because... That's what the male slave must have, is a way of feeding the child it will give birth to. So it's it's basically uh, the the first version of um, a modified slave. Uh, Like these, these prototypes that we see out there, are they raised like differently? Everybody else. Well, they used to be raised differently because they, at first, were raised within the confines of the priesthood. Uh, Vestal virgins, um, uh, monasteries, uh, dual monasteries where priests on one side and nuns on, on the other uh, with a meeting place in the middle. Um, Latter-day saints 
in in the Mormon uh, group. Uh, so if you're raised in a community which is very specific in its application of reality, you're going to be different than if you're raised in a secular world. Uh, and the transfer was done in 1717 by creating Freemasonry in the secular world. 1717 converts, of course, to 88. Male is given the number 8, and the new male is 88. So the male covered with a female exterior is an 88, and that's why 1717 was chosen as the year to create secular Freemasonry. Wow, so do you think like this person like this like these people they know that they're uh a different some would know and others like me would not know. Uh or had not been told and had to work it out themselves along the way. Um I suggest that uh, uh I've been married in my life to some that knew and I didn't. Going back over all of the evidence from the point of view of looking backwards, it's a lot easier than looking forward when you don't know something. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, any uh, one called Carmen, for example, car is the vehicle and men, and therefore would you expect someone who's female, to be called car man, a male vehicle. Uh, and why do they write an opera about it? Because an opera is about their most important works, called opus, which converts to the word soup. Soup will be the black water moat that is expected to kill most of the people in the Northern Hemisphere. So there's people like that walking around? Yeah. Yeah. So I could talk to a girl and then find out she's like a man inside. Yep. Although she may not know, and there is no exterior sign, and the only way it can be determined is by a um, medical examination through the use of x-ray and finding a testy. Now, doctors may know by the chemistry test, you know, the endocrine glands and all of that stuff make chemistry, and there may be a, a sign through that chemistry that tells the doctor this is one of them. That's why... The word medi stands for media and for medicine because they're in on it together. The uh-huh. medical profession is in on it with the media. And, and of course, at the end of medicine, you have cine, which tells you why Hollywood is in on it too. You, know? uh, you, you got me scared there, man. I don't want to go <laughs> to girl, but it's fun now. So maybe that's why, like, a lot of women like the how they think. They, um, uh, you will find, I guess it's it's hard to find it now because there are so many of them now. Mm-hmm. Um, but those people who lived a long time ago um, uh, would find that the the women they slept with wanted intercourse. Today, most women don't. They prefer to have oral intercourse. Uh, so and That's because mm-hmm. of the influence of the man. It's like having a gay man <laughs> inside a woman. Wow. Wow. So 
I come, I don't I never I've haven't heard any case where women just become pregnant by getting themselves pregnant spontaneously. It's just because they have the test. Well, it's because of a, a thing called recessive genes. If a gene is not useful to the environment in which it lives, it basically recedes into the background and doesn't show itself, it's still there. It doesn't show itself except by accident of numbers. At one stage of the game, everything eventually shows itself at least once, and therefore uh, the movie they made last year in uh, about life in South Africa called Skin. Two white people both basically, um, uh, what do they call them, segregationists, uh, uh, Nazis. Oh, um, what do you call those people? Neo-Nazi? Or? Yeah, people that hate blacks. Yeah. In Africa, yeah, I know. Uh-huh. They, you know, they, they're Dutch descent and they live in South Africa and Mm-hmm. And, and they controlled that area, and they had to give it up. And, but the movie is about a man and a woman get married. Mm-hmm. Two people who are white. Mm-hmm. And then they have a baby, and it's a girl. And she's black. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and it begins a big argument in their family and in the community about who did she sleep with. And the answer is found out in court afterwards when a study of the DNA of both of them is examined. And a recessive gene is most likely to show its face when both parents carry the same recessive gene. So it basically meant that in the history, in the background history of the white woman, there were black people. In the background history of the white man, there were black people. They didn't show themselves up until these two happened to come together with the same gene. And then you get the birth of colored person. You could, now, the same thing could happen in reverse. You know, you could be two black people having a white-looking child or even a Chinese-looking mm-hmm. child because that's what recessive genes do. I, I'm doing a study now on that. That's why I raise cats. Mm. Much easier to raise cats than raise humans. <laughs> Plus, you you get a lot more versions quicker. (laughs) But I started off with uh, two cats five years ago, and I have approximately 27 cats now running around the farm here. Um, And and, um, most of them have... Now, a common recessive gene, which appears here, but not amongst most cats. And I've been able to draw draw it out by having so many cats all at once. And since the gene is now being used, and the parents both had it, and what it is, is cats with, instead of a, a cat's paw, normal cat's paw, they have a mitt, like a catcher's mitt in baseball. It's it's uh, uh, seven toes instead of five. And, and you look at it, and sometimes it's in both front feet, sometimes only one front foot. They have this mitt. 
and that matches Michigan yeah. and Mitt Romney. I was just thinking that. <laughs> you know, so there there is an attachment between cats and people, and it's because cats were one of the first domesticated animals. So their DNA, their uh, gray matter in their spine would carry much of the same experiences as people because many of them lived with people. And over time, the social engineering of the time disappeared and the cats and in, in, in my case, I started off with two cats, and one has short hair and one had longer hair. One was a calico-type color, uh, kind of orange and black Halloween colors type of thing, and the other one was white and black. And now on the farm, I have... Uh, Short-haired cats, long-haired cats, white cats, orange cats, calico cats, um, all of the genetic possibilities are there. Some of them want to stay outside. Some of them want to come inside. And um, I, I let a few of the kittens in uh, in the late fall because it was getting cold and they weren't old enough to handle it. So uh, as soon as March comes, they, they all go outside because I'm allergic to cats. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wow. I have to put up with it for the purpose of the study. <laughs> wow. But uh, that's crazy. Like, up, like you about the hermaphrodite, like women, like. <laughs> well, think of a worm. If you're a worm and your space is Earth, uh-huh. how do you find a partner? You, you can't, so you start reproducing yourself. Exactly. Asexual. Yeah, Asexual. and the same thing applies to the first humans. If the two of them had lived together, mm-hmm. and I suggest to you that Homo habilis and Neanderthaler were twins, um, Neither one of them would have had the social engineering they did, and neither one of them would have had the recessive genes they did. So the world would be totally different. They would have been able to have intercourse uh, right from the beginning, such as in the story of, of Lot and his two daughters, after the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah uh, is in the Bible. Uh, the two daughters claim they got the old man drunk, and, and that's how they made children again from that point on. Uh, my view of uh, Sodom and Gomorrah is that Sodom was the story in the Middle East. Gomorrah is yet to come. Gomorrah is currently happening. Mm. It's happening now and it's happening in the Northern Hemisphere. And it's linked to the word Go-Roma. So the Roma have done their job, and now is the time to shut down the lab. That lab is the word ball backwards. So with Ball shutting down the lab, which is Bell, the English language, it's the company called Ma Bell, shutting down with the help of her uh, underground and undersea partner, Shell Oil. We are being, first of all, repossessed, because you go and you rego. You go and you bring it back. In in French, the word is amen, which means bring it on, like George Bush said at the beginning of the Gulf War. And then at the end, it's ramen, 
bring it back. So where's Ramen? Ramen is Armenia. So everything that came from China went through Armenia on its way to the west, and everything is now going through Armenia back to uh, its place of origin. And the path it takes is the same path as the orange took as they distributed oranges out of India an orange is a symbol of protection. It's got all of the pieces tightly knit together to give total protection to the seed on the inside. And it can be separated in its individual parts. Both a grapefruit and an orange can be symbols, one large and one smaller. And what the Japanese role is, is miniaturization. So that's why at Christmas time they sell these little oranges, because the job of Japanese, which is illustrated by the bonsai trees they make, is basically their role in all of this. Male existed since 80,000 B.C. Female existed at least since 115,000 B.C. Neanderthaler existed on the side. Now all three have to be assembled as one, and the part about male-female is fairly easy to understand, but the Neanderthaler is, how do you shrink it down a Neanderthaler and insert him into the body. Well, you miniaturize what you have, and you stick him inside the neck, the narrowing between the spine and the brain, and you call him medulla, after medusa. The medulla then sits in on the shoulders going piggyback and makes the decisions for all things that the brain and the spine are in conflict with. Mm. The, the conflict being the uh, information in the spine is, is uh, stuff from the past, the information from the brain is current. If they can communicate together, they make proper decisions. But now you have a miniature Neanderthaler stuck in the neck so that it basically can pull the reins of the muses, the thalamus. And, uh... So, like, they can, from down there, like, they can... Because they said that we all have genetic these. engineering. I mean, they don't make little people. You know, uh, what they make is the structure that is required, based on their view of the world, must be the will of the slave. Uh, so they assemble that and put it in the egg, and when it develops, it basically develops as that structure that controls two things, the uh, nervous system and the chemistry. So electricity and chemistry in the body are what makes things happen. So why, if, if they did this like through genetic engineering, why would they go through all this trouble of you know, propaganda and all this mind control if they really... Because they couldn't achieve their goals if people had known what they were doing from the beginning. People would have rebelled. you got to remember, they start as, as if you take a rock and you throw it into the water and it hits the surface of the pond. And from there, circles in ever-expanding areas happen. And that's basically what they had to do. They weren't big enough to fight the people on the land. 
I heard they're actually stronger too, physically stronger. From what the the documentaries, because it seems like there's a lot of like. It's just the opposite. They were weak physically. Wow. They were not agile physically, but they were mentally superior in one thing. In wow. each one of them, different. So are they like somehow connected with each other? Yeah. What well, that's what they did. That was their original genius. Hey, if we're stuck and we can't get around and we have this genius um, in each one of us, one for music, one for philosophy, one for mathematics, one for, you know, every Mm -hmm. carpenters, whatever, Mm -hmm. 144,000 bits of genius are acting independently. What do you do? The computer, it's like a. You build a structure, uh, which is comparable to the structure in a car called a distributor cap, except it's not a distributor cap; it's a receiver cap, because they'd be downloading from themselves rather than receiving information, in order to build a computer, a central computer from their savant brain part. And that's what they did. What do you mean, like they, what, they, like they genetically engineered themselves? You say? Yeah, they connected their brain to this receiving device, and the brain, the receiving device was set that it would only read genius. Anything that didn't fall in the category, chemically speaking of genius, because it's all coded, it's a genome, it's it's a, a code structure, anything that didn't fall in that, it rejected. Reject, 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 until you've collected in one place the genius part of each one of them in this chemical computer. Now it becomes a standalone genius over everything and from that point it says okay I'm a a machine made of chemistry life made a machine made of chemistry that gets along on the ground pretty good called woman that's the name they gave how do we appropriate ourselves of woman and steal her body so that we can piggyback on her. Well, you have to go through a process of deceit. You can't go to the woman and say, excuse me, ma'am, would you mind participating in an experiment, the end result of which would be that you would be destroyed and I'd replace you? <laughs> but you can go to the woman and say, you know, you work too hard. Yeah. What you need is a helper. And you have it within you to have a helper. It's a, it, it, it's a part of you that would be a little dumber than you are. Uh, but stronger physically, and it could do the the manual stuff that needs to be done. All I need in order to help you out is some eggs. So would you mind stepping over into my laboratory so we can do a hysterectomy? How do they communicate? You're getting on in age, and you don't need these eggs, so we'll use them, and we'll implant them in one of your clones so they take the eggs take out what's in them put them all in bottles included in these bottles are all of the parts that are needed for making gender they go to the gender parts they take some X's and break a leg off and turn it into a Y and put those in a separate jar and then They make a cocktail 
insert it back into the egg, seal it up, put it inside one of the clones of the women, and say, okay, fertilize it. Now, the woman has a testy, so she fertilizes the egg, and all of a sudden, the baby that comes out is not a clone of her anymore. It's got this hanging thing between its legs <laughs> where where the clitoris should be uh, called a penis, and they begin a process of saying, okay, uh, we'll raise some of these, and you'll see how effective they could be. And once they've got the process going, from the period 80,000 B.C. to approximately 58,800 B.C., they're cloning and they're making males. And all of a sudden, the males and the cloned females are having sex together without the help of uh, the genetic engineers, and they're making babies. And now you have two genders, male and female. Then the Neanderthaler says, yeah, but don't forget, I got a hijacked body. So the the thing is, first take away the power that is held by the woman. Pass it on to the man. Make her obsolete as far as being powerful is concerned. But let the story leak out that a terrible thing has been done to these women. They are no longer allowed to participate the way they used to, and they are designed for the job of decision-making, not managing a house and washing dishes and cleaning floors. So you keep that in background. And at one stage, when you've got enough developed, you begin to reverse the process. You begin a movement called women's rights. You begin a movement called uh, anti-segregation or desegregation because the original women were black. And you work your way backwards until these women... uh, are on the cusp of getting power, but not quite power. They're still answering to men who laid down the rules. The men who laid down the rules, by the way, wear dresses. They're called priests. (laughs) So all of that structure had to be accomplished. And then in the last 100 years or so, a, a new process, had to take place. That was to begin the process of reverting male and female into a hermaphrodite. So that process required that they learn genetically what they had to do, so they made gays, and they made lesbians, and they made cross-genders. And they got from the genetic engineering of these people's genome what they believed they needed so that what they would have would be a recessive male with a um, veneer female. And they began the process of learning how you can interrupt the development of a fetus at the proper moment so that the male part stops functioning and developing and the female begins to function and develop so that the inner part is male and the outer part is female. And after that, they said, okay, that's phase one. Now we have to figure out how we control this being, and we want it to do our will. So they go back into genome, and they study, what is it about us that makes us who we think we are? And they work out what that is, and they say, okay, 
genetically speaking, it's a combination of these instructions. Add it into the egg with the female and remove from the female and male the equivalent parts so that it's us that makes this part. And the part they wanted to make was the electric and chemical systems of the body that makes it automatically respond to things, causes the heart to beat, causes the legs to move, causes the uh, thinking to um, go down a certain path based upon how they feel intuitively speaking and and uh, through reason how how they feel and if they don't like what they're hearing they pull on a chain and cause depression or a physical ailment such as a lame leg to uh, halt the person from physically doing things now in the 16 to 1800 period, after the technology was transferred over to the West, they got the Japanese to miniaturize all of this stuff, genetically speaking, and insert it into the next eggs they began to make in 1717. And, and each attempt they made taught them lessons so that uh, Japan was controlled right to the 1800s while this process was going on, and then they reopened up to the world. The, the closing down of Japan was done by the Jesuits, and the only people allowed in at the end were Americans. So it suggests that the Jesuits were basically making Americans and that the implants of this third kind gender, which is called triune man, three in one man, was in fact completed by the mid-1800s. And so they had the Civil War and they had the... Uh, Indian Wars, and they brought in Eastern Europeans to take over from the conditions they had set up originally, which was slavery with the white people on the East Coast and Roma as Indians uh, on the interior and West. And now the time had come to bring the two things together, so they got Lewis and Clark to lay out the territory, and they brought in 12 million Eastern Europeans into New York City, uh, who then spread out from there and took control over universities, over finance, over uh, the dissemination of information through publishing and news outlets, and their final coup de grace is the um, setup in Hollywood uh, for the making of movies because a picture is worth a thousand words. And with all of their tools in place, they began to do public education, public education with uh, a purpose. A purpose-driven life is what we're all about. Unfortunately, it's not our purpose. Yeah. It's the Neanderthalers' purpose that we're all about. So it really is like a big uh, computer system. In a sense. Yeah, we're a matrix. Yeah. So, so people like me, what I'm just like a side effect, right? Well, you know, you're ancestors are obviously out of Africa and there had to be a transit point along the way and Haiti is one of the transit points. Some went further into the U.S. 
others stayed in Haiti to be part of the support structure. If you look at a map of the Caribbean and an area around uh, the Caribbean, mm -hmm. um, all of it put together uh, using a different color for the ocean, uh, light blue, makes an owl. That's suggestive that the control mechanisms are within those islands, and I would suggest Cuba uh, being the main one. Isle of Youth over on the side is probably the contact point, uh, and all of the other islands are basically extensions of that. Rich people go to some islands and not to others. Uh, that would suggest that from there they can have contact with the Neanderthalers. Um, and then you have the same kind of activity when you go west. If you look at the shape of the Rocky Mountains closely on a map from um, uh, Washington State down to California, it's like an owl. Bohemian Grove is part of that story. The the owl on the uh, dollar bill, mm -hmm. uh, but the word owl is basically not written properly. It's low, right? It's low. The low story. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. And it's from there they got the word wall, ball. Wow. Uh, and ball is uh. It's the People, love of money. Yep, because uh, yeah, that's why you you go to court, you pay. Well. <laughs> Golden calf. Yeah. And and a um, a hedgehog, which is what they're like. Uh, they kind of hang around the edges of everything and hog things. Um, if you if you scare a hedgehog, it it basically curls up into a ball, and you can't see where the head is. You know. Yeah. Something like a porcupine and other it, animals uh, like that. It's interesting to me like how they can have like you know, like esoteric meanings like on one level and and that's like really amazing enough, like deeper That's what Saint Bernard said, if you want to learn about what's really going on in the world, mm -hmm. don't waste your time reading books. Look at nature in the animal world. That's where they took all the information from. Yeah, and that's why in the temples they say, know thyself. Yeah. <laughs> know thyself. Wow. Wow, man. <laughs> so maybe I should just we, like... We are all robots today. We're all robots. The question is, how many of us are able to circumvent the control mechanism? And I put it to you, it's easier in men than it is in women because the focus uh, has not been on men. Men are basically a byproduct of women anyways. The focus has been on the destruction of women and turning them into uh, people who focus on only two things. They need to have a sense of who they used to be by basically controlling a household. If they can't control a clan, maybe they can control a household. And, and that household must be secure. So security uh, and, and control are the dominating factors in women. Men, on the other hand, sex and a sandwich. <laughs> as long as they don't have to find a person to go to bed with because it's at the house um, and um, their meals are prepared, that's basically what they care about. Deep down inside. That's the majority of men. 
Now, every rule has exceptions. Uh-huh. And that's uh, the, the branch that leaves the tree and, and doesn't fit in the shape of the tree. The percentage of that, I suggest, is less than 1% of the total when it comes to people who can continue to think for themselves. Because all of the rules set up through social engineering tell us that you shouldn't be doing that. It's not going to be helpful to uh, sex or a sandwich. And it's not going to be helpful if you're a female to security and sovereignty. So people just don't do it. But the exception to the rule, and you may just be one of them, you're not allowing them to use you and you do what you do because you want to learn, then you would be an exception to the rule. How we explain that exception, how it comes about, uh, is is basically difficult to figure out. But my um, educated guess is since 37% of us is male, 27%, 37% is female, 25% is Neanderthaler, that leaves 1%. And I suggest that the cocktail had to be put in an egg, and therefore the eggshell itself might carry a recessive gene that creates this abnormality wanting to know. Well, with you, like, I, I guess that's what the, what, what, with you, what happened with you, right? Like, Yeah. Cause what 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 made you first like realize like what like was it something that happened and that you see you saw something when you were in your childhood? Well, for me, it was a, a regular activity that I was um, drawn to and assisted in participating in a new activity, mm-hmm. and then violently almost extracted from that environment and put into a new activity which I would consider to be superior to the one I left. The one I was in, I thought I was superior while I was there. Afterwards, I felt that I was moving into a superior activity. And by that, I mean uh, learning about small business, learning about large business, learning about politics, learning about religion, learning about um, uh, media and security forces and all of these activities um, where you go in and you're heading for the top and all of a sudden you're out and you're starting something else. All of this to me said, I'm not in charge of my own life. Somebody is managing this. Yeah. Somebody is doing this. This, there, they may be different people in each situation, mm-hmm. but somebody has control yep. over all of this. That's what I feel like too. Yeah. And when when I I set up a hundred and sixty million dollar project and bought the land and was ready to start construction, and I get a politician coming to me to ask me for money. And I refuse. Then you really you seen that control. Then I saw, well, it's a single person asking me for money. But when I moved to investigating that single person, I kept seeing he has a boss. His boss is a political party. They have a boss. His Their boss is corporations. They have a boss. Their boss is where most of the money is, religion. They have a boss. Their boss is media, because media is the only one that benefits from all of these things. Mm-hmm. And and then I found the code. And the code basically gave me the story of genetic engineering and how you take control 
over a person or a nation. How you you manufacture a tax base from which you can benefit by toll gating on everybody involved in it. And I said, well, this wouldn't happen unless there was people with a secret. Uh Aha, there are people with secrets. They're called secret societies. Why do they have secret societies in supposedly democratic countries? Doesn't make sense. They are opposite concepts. And then I, I looked through all of the code, and it said, country. If you move letters around, what do you get? Take the O out of country and move Cunt. it to be before the letter Y and after the letter R. Write that down. Cunt Roy. Roy is the French word for king. Cunt is king. <laughs> Arranged marriages explains how they use it. Marriage itself explains how they use it broadly. Why why marriage? Wasn't a clan a better idea than a family? Yeah, I thought marriage was just a eugenics plan, just to breed more. That's why they... Well, uh, uh, it's control. Yeah. It's the symbol of the crucifixion. You take a foot from one and a foot from the other, and you put a nail in the middle. And that means both of them can't be themselves. Mm -hmm. Both of them are basically a compromise of the other. And that's not good for either party. Whereas a clan... You had mothers and you had men out there. And the mothers would invite a man to come and live with her for a while. And after she had a baby, she sent them back to work, go back and live with the men. And the baby was raised by the clan, not by a single person, And that meant the baby could be assigned uh, soulmates, is the word that comes to mind. Uh, Twelve people, eight males, or uh, six males and six females, each would teach the child a specific lesson. No single father or mother could compare in teaching a child as a clan could. Because you could have a specialist in hunting, a specialist in building buildings, a specialist in sex, a specialist in all kinds of things that the child could draw upon whenever they had questions. Go see George. He's the one who will give you the answers on this. Mary will talk to you about sex. Mary is probably the ugly woman who doesn't have too many men responding to her invitation, but she gets to teach the young boys about sex, and when they're 12, 13 years old, they don't care what it looks like as long as it does it. (laughs) Uh. (laughs) I mean, clan is the way that creation intended. Family is the way the control mechanisms want it. In the same way with nations, you have people who say, this line on this piece of geography says that I should be prepared to die for it. Excuse me? (laughs) Yeah, that's all patriotism. Who are you dying for? You're dying dying for the tax collectors. Mm Mm-hmm. But they don't see it like that. Like you said, like like most people, you know, they go through a lot. They think they have like full control of them just because they. It you seems like they see. choose to go to work and choose to pay their taxes. Yeah, they're robots. Yeah. 
And that's what brings compassion from people like me. Uh, How can you feel badly towards a robot? Are they to blame for the idiotic things they do? Who is to blame? Is it is it the manufacturer of the robot that's to blame? Yeah. Is it the programmer of the robot that's to blame? Is it the preventative maintenance people who are to blame for what a robot does? Yeah. I mean, certainly you can't blame the robot. It's just following instructions. That's what the story of Jesus was in In uh, Luke chapter 2, verses 40 to 49, where uh, Mary and Joseph are on their way back to Bethlehem, they realize Jesus is not around. And they double back and go back to Jerusalem only to find him in a uh, synagogue, in a temple, teaching the rabbis who are all listening attentively. And Mary says to him, don't you know we would worry? And he said, no. Don't you know that I must be about my father's business? That basically is telling him, Joseph, you're standing there. You're not my father. You may be married to this Mary, who was the surrogate mother who carried an egg to term. But the genetic engineer that prepared this egg is my father. And he's given me instructions that i got to go about doing this work, which is teaching rabbis or teaching teachers, because the word rabbi basically means teacher. So I teach teachers, is what Jesus was saying, on behalf of my genetic engineering father. So he's saying, I'm a robot, just like you and everybody else in the world, except this is my task. Hmm. Well, I I decided that I wasn't going to be the creator's robot. If I'm going to be a robot, I want to be creation's robot. Creation's Creation made creator along with everything else. Creator can't take any uh, credit for genetic engineering. He didn't make up the genetic engineering code. He just read it and used it. Hmm. And he used it for self-serving purposes. Adore me. Hmm. Fuck you. Hmm. That's um that's a part of like you know humanity that's an ugly part like the you know the ego and and, and yeah and you put a cop inside of us that won't allow us to do what we want to do and it's called ego and it's three letters from the word rego. Yeah. So you put a super ego in there, Mm -hmm. and what we talk to people with when we don't know anything is our super ego, because the cop in there won't let us be known. And us is our id, or in other words, our ID. Who we really are is an ID. Intelligent design. Identification. An idea. Uh, idea of creation. In any event, it's time for me to go prepare my tomorrow's work. Had a meeting with our security people today. They tell me that there are people in the neighborhood who who need to be watched, uh, who may not have uh, my um, survival in mind. Oh, man. So I uh, 
got to uh, see what I can do or what's missing in our security plans around here. Uh, that's the thing. I want. That's the thing. Like, I, I, I'm kind of like nervous about like, you know, like I, I do want to, I tell like some people about you, but I don't. I, you know, I don't. I'm kind of scared because I'm, I'm scared. It's like it might endanger you. At the same time. Well, the I'm past the uh, the normal, you know, shoot them in the head place because I talk too much, I told too many people what I know, yeah. and therefore they can't stop a secret from going out when sixteen thousand people came to my website in a day. Uh, so their um, duty, I guess, at this stage of the game. Is is to cause me problems with with neighbors and with the community. And one example of that is a woman who stopped her car and came and complained about our goats being beyond the fence. And then the next morning, City Hall sends a a letter saying that uh, uh, I can be fined if a goat goes beyond my fence. Uh, goat, chicken, horse, mule, whatever. Uh, they can they can snatch it and dispose of the animal, and they can find me. So since I only live on a old age pension, mm-hmm. they are trying to limit my ability to do my study. On the uh, on the other hand, the media, uh, who have tried ignoring me, um, basically found that I cir- circumvented uh, what they did uh, at every step of the way and, and still continue to get uh, information out to a broad enough public that people like you and others got to know. So... Their next step when that happens is usually entrapment. They they try to um, set you up. Uh, One of the ways they try to set me up is having um, their own people order uh, Keeley papers and then tracing where the money goes to make sure (laughs) that I'm not benefiting personally from uh, the sale of papers or, or seminars or whatever. And I've established right from the beginning uh, um, a modus operandi uh, where all the money I get gets deposited in a bank account uh, with the exception of uh, if it's a small amount and it's cash. Uh, Ten bucks, twenty bucks, fifty bucks—that type of thing. Everything else gets deposited in a bank account, and uh, they can track it. But uh, you know, if if somebody sent sent me a uh, hundred dollars in cash, and I uh, didn't deposit it in the account, you could be sure the media uh, would have that information over at the police station. The police station would act on the instructions and charges would be laid against me and, you know, they would try to destroy my reputation uh, among the public uh, by making out that I'm benefiting financially. The people should come and see the environment in which I live called minimalist Mm -hmm. and I've been living in a minimalist environment uh, for the last 20 some years even though before then my accountant told me I was a millionaire so (laughs) basically I was raised in a lower middle class family but Never wanted for anything. As I grew up, I made money. Uh, But I set that aside. 1987. 
refuse to work for income. The fact that I had uh, arthritis allowed me to collect a small pension uh, about 10 years ago. And the fact that I became 65 allowed that small pension to be increased a little bit because I'm old. And those two activities together allow me to survive. And and when survive uh, is operating, it means I can learn from the surroundings I created around me and I can send that information out to others via whatever is the cheapest means at the time. At the beginning, my experience allowed me to be a printer publisher. I did that since that was my training in school. Now, the net allowed me mass distribution and went through the process of setting up three different websites. Each time the system found a way to block it through their corrupt activity. And uh, now I'm basically down to using direct email instead of direct mail. Uh, I'm not doing this for other people. I'm doing it for me. I came to learn and teach what I learned, and I've been successful at doing that. I expected I would be dead before now, so I'm on gravy time. Anything they do to me will not stop me because they will only kill this body, since I was manufactured in a lab from DNA, I can be made again. And I would be made again. And I have been made again. Therefore, I don't have any fear based on dying. That, to me, is irrelevant. I just hope that we can get enough information out soon enough that we can affect what is the planned outcome. Mm. If I succeed in doing that, that would be great. If creation decides they need the experience of having mass destruction on the planet of humans, as they had with mammoths and dinosaur, that's what will happen. I will be there one way or another because I will remember with creation when I leave here and my job is never over. I come back regularly. Have that done that, I believe, since at least 40,000 B.C. with the making of the original Cro-Magnon and maybe I go back further, although I'm not certain myself of that yet. Is there a way I can find out how far I go back? Like, I beg your pardon? Is there a way I can find out how far I go back? Yeah, you, you basically have to go through the process of increasing your intuition. Brain seems to function normally. And therefore, intuition is what's needed. And the, the part that is easiest to achieve is what is described in the Bible under the topic called Samson and Delilah. That in order to weaken Samson, Delilah cut his hair. So don't cut your hair. And once your hair grows beyond your neck, 
because hairs are sensors. They will pick up your ancient knowledge. And at one stage of the game, you'll put all the pieces together. Uh, so you you see the difference w- between when you had long hair and when you had... Absolutely. I never had long hair. Yeah, I've seen your old Not in my world. <laughs> long hair was considered, you know, not unbusinesslike, unprofessional. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And they they have a reason for it. <laughs> they don't want you to know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I see that, like, with the, and they're also all like the old, like the Andrew and Oh, man, they all had long hair. Yeah. The original native people that were marooned all over the world they all had long hair. And then they make them do things to it, like shave the sides, you know, yeah. like the Mohawks or yeah. uh, huh. <laughs> just uh, make a ponytail. The minute you tie them together, um, and don't let them hang. Uh, they kind of interfere one with each other. You know, they're, it's like too much of a charge going through the same place. Mm-hmm. So, you know, don't curl them. Don't put them on top of your head. Don't tie them in a ponytail. Don't shave part of them. Uh, the only part I shave. Uh, is uh, I don't allow my beard to just grow because I, I I don't want to look like a Taliban. <laughs> <laughs> the beard I suggest has a different purpose than the hair on the head because it comes late in life. Yeah, uh, what is it like to like oh warm up your face or something? Well, it's. Uh, it's inconvenient, to say the least, when you're uh, always having a hair that, that either tickles your nose or hangs on to your food, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, that kind of stuff. So, But there's a purpose for it, and I, I let my beard grow just, you know, uh, about an inch or an inch and a half or something. How about like you might think it's crazy, but how about like they call them the wisdom teeth, right? Why do they call them wisdom teeth? Well, because they come late in life. Oh, that's it. Oh. Yeah. No. Yeah, everything that comes late in life uh, brings with it information from inside of you that has probably links to the spine and would increase your intuition. So they would become a a threat to the system and they have to be removed. So, you know, they want pieces of your throat removed. Yeah, and the appendix. Yeah, appendix and and wisdom teeth. That's weakening your immune system too. Yeah, corneas of the eyes and stuff. In any event... That's the physical things you you should do if you want to be more intuitive. Uh, but the the uh, understanding of um, the codes they use, how they use it, uh, because you're from Haiti, you may have uh, a little more ability than most because of the French. Uh, influence on Haiti. Uh, you got to remember that these codes for us that are to be crucified were written at the time of Christ, which basically means it was Aramaic. Aramaic was the language of the Middle East, and that language became Latin, and Latin became French. English is 65% French. But if you have the original French version, uh, many of the things that I can overstand is because I can read a word, 
convert it phonetically to the sound and the syllable as visual, and then from the sound say, what does this sound in French mean as opposed to in English? And by having both versions, English and French, I can um, often uh, have a shortcut to, uh, to the truth of what I'm looking for. So you you got to learn how to use dictionaries, uh, how to uh, search syllables as opposed to whole words, how to um, examine illustrations that are the basis of the letter forms, pictograms they make. Encyclopedias need to be read cover to cover. The ones before World War One, right? Yeah. Okay. Because after World War One, they began public education. Oh. And the minute they do that, they don't allow the information they allowed for priests to appear. So encyclopedias and dictionaries basically were made for a select group of people, which was now going to be expanded uh, by a multiple of many millions so they had to uh, had to change things in there yeah. but if you have some old dictionaries old encyclopedias read them you'll find definitions and clues in places you don't expect and and you only have the rest of your life you know? yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You don't have to worry like it's a job that's got to be done by tomorrow morning. You say, I've been given uh, a task to do, observe, analyze, and conclude, and I'm starting today. There's no income, but somehow survival seems to happen when you're on the right track. That's really more important than uh, money to me. <laughs> yeah. So I- uh, survival in a an atmosphere that allows you to learn and teach. Once you learn, you teach. And I suggest that you're not going to grasp the full meaning of the things you learn until you're 40 years of age. How old are you now? 25. So another 15 years. That will bring you into the 2020 Three range, four range there. The first cataclysmic event should have occurred by then, must have occurred by then. You'll be uh, in a period where we won't, it won't be as difficult as the period we have now. More people will believe but you will be faced with a coming cataclysmic event, the second one. Uh, You survive long enough, a third. Unless we can basically get through to Neanderthalers and and help them gain a sense of self-worth, which they obviously lack since that's the cause of control freaks, and, and uh, then maybe we don't need a second crisis or a third crisis and destruction of billions of people. If it if it's to happen because creation believes it should happen, there's nothing we can do to stop it. So learning is the most important thing experiencing experiences that can then be brought back to creation uh, is the purpose. The more experiences you gain, the better off you are. And at one stage of the game, your DNA will be collected. It will either be collected by someone who believes you deserve to live in eternity or it will be collected by someone who says, 
on its own, this ain't worth much. So throw it back into the kettle, mix it all with the others that ain't worth much, and see what lava brings up the next time. Maybe the recombination will uh, be better. Those are basically the two options. There is a third option. Your DNA gets kidnapped. Your robotic uh, activities are reinforced, and you're put out as a dyer for the sun, what they call soldiers, saw dyers. Mm. They die for the soul, for the saw. The sun. And the sun they're talking about is a period in time that will begin in 7500 AD, 4491 years from now. And it's called Alder Amin. La Red Men. La Red Amen. Amen basically means two in one with a bar that holds it all together, which is the Neanderthal. Amen. That's why they make people say that at the end of every religious service and prayer. What they're preaching is a third kind gender without knowing it. Mm. Well, I think it was just it was praying to the sun god. I'm in Ra. Well, it is a sun. <laughs> <laughs> it is a sun. It's just not the one we have now. Maybe the one that's having an influence on us, uh, causing global warming or climate change, whatever you want to call it. Um, it, it could very well be what makes the orbit of the Earth an egg instead of a circle because obviously there is a magnetic attraction on an egg shape at one stage of the game rather than on a on a circle we'll know soon enough you're not told um, uh, when you're in the in-between stage, you're not allowed to bring back any of the real memories from, from your past lives, but you are allowed to learn about it while you're in this life. So that's what I'm doing. Right. Well, thanks, Glenn. Have a good night. Mm -hmm. We'll talk to you again. All right. Bye for now.